Welcome boys and girls, I'm glad you're all here for this very special time at the end of the year. I'm Perry Nemroff and I'm here to guide you through Collider's Best of the Week in Review. You see, the folks at Collider have been toiling away to bring you great content each and every day. Now it's time to look back at the best of the best, the most special moments that stand out from all the rest. Movie Talk's where we'll start as we always do and check in with Mark Ellis and the rest of his crew as they talk about Comic-Con, its trailers galore, Justice League, Wonder Woman, Marvel panels, and more. The trailer or footage or whatever you want to call it started off well for me because they started off with the White Stripes song, Icky Thump, yeah. in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seeing uh, Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne play that Iron Man, Tony Stark role, gathering everyone together was kind of cool. And, and Christian's right, the humor was... It, it seemed to fit a lot better. And I don't know how maybe some of the DC diehard fans are gonna feel about this. Are they gonna say, oh, is this too Marvel-like? Is this, are they trying to copy Marvel and they're gonna be upset by it? But I thought it fit well. And then the Flash costume. That I think was mm -hmm. one of the biggest things because we got to see it's, va it's a lot different than the one we see on television. This one seems kind of more like almost like a mech suit. Yeah, I thought the opening was incredible. I thought it was a, I thought it was one of the best trailers I've seen at Comic Con in a long time. I actually really, really enjoyed the way it opened up. I thought by her approaching, we we we've always heard of the legend of Steve Trevor. I mean, and Wonder Woman. You know, we've never seen it on screen ever. We have never seen the two of them on screen in their own movie. And if it was, it was some crap porn or something. But you know, <laughs> as far as like an actual film, we haven't seen it yet. And when they showed up, and it's because they bookended it. They bookend it really well. Starts off with her discovering him, talking about the fact that she's never seen a man, that she is it was created by Zeus, and then at the very end having that little kind of tag at the end saying we call it where I'm from, like we call that slavery. It's like all these things that, that start and end, but it's the in between, the meet in the middle that was so interesting. The lasso, the action, the way Patty Jenkins shot, the way that they held on those long shots for a bit. It was great seeing these two things live like we did. And I'm not rubbing it in that as I'm just mentioning that the way they presented it was awesome because you got to see the star of the movie come out first and hang out with the director for a little bit and then they introduced some of the supplementary cast but the Black Panther thing blew me away because that's what they opened that panel with pretty much and it's awesome to see how excited they are and they did a great job of saying well look we can't really get into specifics about too much yet because we haven't even finished writing the movie yet much less start shooting it it was cool to see Michael B. Jordan up there because you know the relationship he already has with Ryan Coogler. They, they, it's been great for two movies now, and I think it's gonna be even better after seeing Black Panther. And then the Spider-Man stuff, like seeing that clip that they showed us of Spider-Man, what his day-to-day -day is like in high school, it had that coming of age vibe that we all assumed we were gonna get once we heard the title Spider-Man Homecoming. And that scene of the vulture at the end was just, it was like, oh yeah, this is still, you know, this isn't all just a kid figuring out who he is in high school. This is also going to be a Spider-Man flick. I love seeing that. Are you into comics? Do you like wearing tights? Do you love Men of Steel, Web Slingers, Dark Knights? Then check out our show Heroes, if this sounds like you, as they give us their spoiler BVS Ultimate Edition review. When you see this ultimate cut, it's not like they cut out these three scenes that are seven minutes each. They shaved off little bits and pieces everywhere and then rearranged sequences in the theatrical cut so they, they just play differently. Yeah. This, they put it back, I guess, the way originally it was. It doesn't feel like a jigsaw piece, and it's just a smoother film. So Absolutely. honestly, for myself, the three hours went by smoother yes. and quicker than the two-and-a-half-hour version. It's night and day. It's just, it's so crazy the difference between these versions. And, and I think the thing that I took away when the movie ended was I actually felt terrible or I felt bad for Zack Snyder because this is the movie he made. And this is the version he wanted to release. Like, and, and I don't know if you guys ever saw, but I interviewed him at the junket and he said, I made a three hour version and I wish I could have released it, but you know, I, I can't, I got to release a two and a half hour version. and. It's such a different movie, and it's so not good compared to this one. Um, I think this movie is so much better. It's exactly what you said. It's not a perfect movie. It clearly has some issues with the script, story, especially in third act. But um, it's so much better in the in the, the first two acts. It's like night and day. I have to agree. It's literally night and day. There were some scenes in there that they cut. I'm like, what the hell were they thinking? Especially at the expense of. Batman? Right. Okay, spoiler, the Arkham scene? How do you not, how are you gonna tell? 
Lex Luthor, you're going to send him to Gotham. That's a major fanboy moment for DC fanboys. And you right. cut that out of the movie? A little 15 seconds. It could have just left. Maybe 25 exactly. seconds. That's all you needed. Oh, my God. They cut so much stuff at the expense of poor Batman. Well, for me, it wasn't a night and day like for you guys. I, I, initially, I When we did our review of it, I, I like this film. Obviously, there's flaws to it. I think what this version does is it makes it that flow better in the sense of there's less abrupt cuts and then also it fleshes out certain scenes you see the same scenes that we've already seen before but there's there's more to them like either in the beginning or the end or we have extra scenes that it just makes the the movie flow a little better it's still i mean three hours is still a long time for mm -hmm. for, for this type of movie at least for me personally so uh, for me, I thought I thought it was an improvement, uh, but I don't, I don't I don't have that night and day like you guys have. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, specifically here at Collider every Thursday, the Council had gathered to assure us Star Wars wasn't done. They discussed Disney's plans past 2021. For as long as people want to watch Star Wars movies. They're going to keep making them. They're going to continue out the universe. We know that the universe is big enough for them. The galaxy is big enough for them to to explore. So they're going to do it. And why? Would, I mean, that's what Lucasfilm does. They're going to be uh, come up with brand new ideas for this is something that the, the, the story team or maybe they're looking at ideas and they say, you know what? This is something we should do eventually. And that eventually could be 2026. <laughs> but it's in the development team. So when they have their meetings, they can say, oh, you know what, that might not work here. But let's hold it because you never know if we can use that in the blah, blah, blah movie that comes out in 10 years from now. We know they have a little cell where they cram in about 50 just artists just constantly like drawing and sketching right. and coming up with concepts and ideas that then get passed down the line. You know you got a lot of people writing ideas, writing characters, writing whatever, just all pieces of the puzzle that can be brought together into a glorious whole at some point a little bit down the road. So no, look, they have, their plan is to make Star Wars movies forever. That's their plan. It, that's what they're going to do. You put it perfectly. The, as long as people want to see Star Wars movies, mm -hmm. they're going to have the next four or five years in advance planned out. Mark? Speaking of glorious holes, uh, I think <laughs> you're, you're so laughing. That's why I was laughing. W H O L. I, I couldn't. Coach would take me out of the game if I don't take that shot. Uh, it is interesting because they're definitely kind of confirming that we're going to be <laughs> making movies every year, and that they didn't mention there's going to be any sort of break. He didn't say, "Well, Kathleen and I are going to, you know, we're going to pump the brakes here. We're going to see whether we want to make more movies immediately. They're going to keep making more movies immediately." He didn't say anything particularly about the Skywalker saga, or if it's going to be Episode Ten is going to be one of those movies in like 2021, but. It seems like they are full born on Star Wars, which surprises nobody. Tiff? Yeah, it, again, it's kind of like not surprising at all that they're continuing to move forward with it. The best part is I think that because now everything that comes out is canon, they can use all of that and decide what they want to move forward with, where it's like we've got the books coming out, we've even got you know Rebels, all of these things where it's who are the characters people are really connecting to, and those are the ones that maybe in 2020 mm. we're going to get a story about that character because people will have become so connected to that character. Because it's really when you look at the comic books, that's the same sort of thing that has happened where it's certain characters within the comic books people really connect right. with, and they're like, okay, we want to see this character. Who are the fans really asking for? And I think that, you know, they can start listening to that and using it when they move forward. This past year was spooky, frighteningly so. And we covered it all on our very own horror show. We, the panel, love being scared and embracing our fears. So now let's find out why on Collider Nightmares. Alien and Blade Runner, those films to me, followed by Event Horizon, a lot of other kind of matchups of science fiction and horror. Why I love them is because of those two. Uh, are just like ch uh, chocolate and peanut butter, two great tastes that go well together. Science fiction and horror, that blend is amazing. You have a dystopian future. You even have like films like, uh, you could even call Logan's Run mm -hmm. somewhat of a horror film where you're like, oh, your time's up, you're gonna die. I mean, all of these things, that kind of blend to me has always worked and I just I just dig it, man. It goes real deep to me. I've asked this uh, a number of times about myself, like why do I like it? I've studied it even. There was uh, an article I read that Horror movies scare me so much, they remind me I'm alive. I love the feeling of being scared. I mm -hmm. love when my stomach drops, whether it's on like a roller coaster or if Makuga is hiding under my desk, <laughs> I just walk away with like an extra like burst of adrenaline. I love that feeling. 
And I love horror movies and sci-fi horror movies that make me think, what would I do in that situation? Like, There's one of my favorite questions is when someone asks, like, what would you do in a zombie apocalypse? Mm-hmm. How would you survive? Or an alien invasion? Or, or, like, Independence Day? Or something like that. I love how, by the way, all three of our answers are completely different, which yeah. is great, you know? Or and, and mine is different from what you guys have already said. And that's, you know, for me, it, what interests me um, academically, almost, is, like, what scares people? What scares an individual? And then what scares a culture? What scares a society? You know, I feel like satire and horror and science fiction are the are the genres that I think most speak truth to power. Um, they taught you know, and and I also think that there's something to be said for looking at what you're afraid of, but also looking at what like releasing aggression in a controlled environment. I think all of that is fair and human. Now the interview portion of this video is here, so let's look back at some of the best conversations this year. First up, my man Bruce, star of Ash vs. Evil Dead. Let's get under his skin and into his head. Because it stars, it's one of the rare occasions where the material can match what, what we need to do with no restriction. We, I have to go in and record over my boo-boo words for other countries, not for the U.S. It used to be the other way around. <laughs> what are some of the word swaps you have to do? Well, you can't say that you, they just... They, they don't like the usual F-bombs and things like okay, that. Okay, so, so wait, what is, what is the pink fuck called in another country then? Oh, pink freak. <laughs> uh, Not as good. Of course, they're never as <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, never as good. And sometimes uh, just being belligerent, I'll, I'll come up with a word that won't match my lips at all. Pink fraggle rock. <laughs> Whatever. Because you go worry, deal with it, right. uh, Greece. <laughs> right. So wait, they're not cool with like F-bombs, but they're okay with you shoving your head up a corpse's ass? Every country has its own weird crap going on. In the United States, you can shoot a booby, but you can't kiss a booby. Uh, In Europe, (laughs) sure, man, boobies all day long. Let the freak, but don't be doing violence. Because we don't do violence in Europe. The Russos are brothers, if you didn't know. What did they have to say when they stopped by our show? Spider-Man, giant man fighting in civil war. Oh, and spoilers ahead, if you don't want to know more. Spider-Man fighting Ant-Man slash, you know, Giant Man. Let's talk about that, the whole Empire Strikes Back a little <laughs> bit. What, where'd that come from? Well, it came from the fact that, again, we're comic book fanatics. And to me, that, would, that was like a dream fight. You know, it's like, if you know, f- first of all, we fought to get Ant-Man in the movie because we knew Cap needed a little more firepower on his team, and we wanted to introduce Giant Man for that reason. Uh, uh, once we had Spider-Man in the film and Giant Man, it was like, okay, how can who could on Tony's side bring down Giant Man? Well, let's talk up through everybody's powers. What's the most interesting combination? Yeah, well, it will certainly be, it ended up being Spider-Man, right? That uh, you know, and, and as we were we were sitting in a room, sort of working out the logistics of how that would happen. Uh, uh, that he could tie up his legs at the same time that Tony, who's the leader of the team and needs to be present in the, you know, have a good beat in that sequence, uh, punches him in the face, you know, but it's the kid who figures out how to take down the giant, and he uses a reference from uh, from a very old film that he knows of called uh, called Empire Strikes the Back. Empire Strikes Back, That's which is right. really just us making fun of ourselves, you know. <laughs> totally, uh, with, and, and being you know being self referential. It's the kind of jokes that we like to do on Community and Arrested Development. This next section contains spoilers, so cover your ears if you're not caught up on Game of Thrones, HBO's best show in years. TV Talk covered the finale, the very last of the season, and if you didn't fear Cersei before, they now give you a pretty damn good reason. She did what she did with the wildfire, and I did the same thing because I exploded with with glee and joy. (laughs) It was insane, and to have- Unsane. It was, it was completely unsane. And then have Tommen, that little bitch, (laughs) jump out the window, I was like, yeah! I thought the whole episode was just so good. Uh, And the thing is, what's scary now is that Cersei, without that anchor that is her children, the one thing that gave her humanity is now gone. She is the most frightening character in the book now. Yeah. I th- or sorry, well, the, I mean the series, I'm sorry, the series, because she doesn't have that one thing that brought her humanity, the one thing that brought her happiness was her kids. Now, I mean, you can see Jamie looking at her across the crowd. Even Jamie's scared of her. Yeah. I was most surprised by my reaction that I now 
love Cersei Lannister. No. I know. I know. I hate myself, but I love myself because suddenly she's so dope. And this season, ever since The Walk of Shame, she has become this different, she's changed. She's evolved in a way where I now feel like sympathy for her. And she's also pulling that badass shit where she like closing the door, shame, shame. That was incredible. I suddenly like her a lot. Sorry. She's a great villain. She's a, she's a great good character. Lena Headey's just t- knocking out of the park every time yeah. she's on screen. I mean, I agree with you. I don't like her character, but I love her performance. She's fantastic. She's great. She's one of those characters you love to hate. She's become like the new Joffrey now. Yeah. The actor's just tearing it up. Pulling oh, it but off, I but wanted like, Joffrey to die so bad. The same way I wanted Ramsay to die. I don't want Cersei to die. Um, I mean, she has to in order for anybody yeah. else to hold the throne because she's just too damn good at it. Did anybody feel sad about Marjorie? Uh, I was, I, I tell you what, of all the people that got melted by the wildfire in the keep or in the sept, I was most upset that she died because I liked Marjorie Tyrell a lot. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, wanted to, well, yeah, I wanted to see where her storyline was going to go because she hands that flower to her grandmother. Obviously, you know, the grandmother is, is going and is hanging out in Dorne and whatever, but I wanted to see her get some some revenge. I well, yeah, because Marjorie could she go toe to toe with Cersei. She was smart. Absolutely. She was the one who said, "Hey, we should probably get out of here." Yeah. She knew. Collider is more than just video, as you probably know. So get ready to read. It's the dot com portion of the show. First, we have something by Allison Keen. It's a handy review of New Fall TV. Next up, Black Mirror ranked from best to worst. Go check out if your favorite is listed as first. Then Hallie Fouch talks Harley Quinn in that poor DC movie that just can't seem to win. Next up on our list of reading online, a list of the best horror movies of all time. Oh, Adam Chitwood, who would you say are the best cinematographers working today? Have you heard of the Schmodown or do you live under a rock? It's all movie knowledge and of course, smack talk. First up is a team match, one you won't want to miss between our very own Jedi Council going up against Whitwer and Freddie Prince. Things have gone wrong sometimes in oh, our relationship. Yeah. But we've settled our differences. We're good. Totally. And let me tell you something right to camera. Right to camera. Nothing is going to separate the Force Bros. That's right. I am a very happy fan of the movie trivia showdown. I love sitting back and watching the matches, and here I am enjoying the nice match between Freddie Prinze Jr. and Sam Witwer, and then what does Witwer do? He has a brain freeze, and he decides to use his post-interview to call out me? Are you kidding, son? Stan me, Campy, are you listening to me? Can you hear me, Campy? Because it's happened. The Pit Boss, Ken Knapsack, and John, the Canadian Champion, the Council! Freddie Prince Jr. and Sam the Warrior Whitworth! category of A New Hope. Which rebel pilot sees the Death Star and exclaims, look at the size of that thing. I mean, I see that it looks like all four of them know it. See, yeah, we'll they're see. all riding right away. I, I mean, I think, all right, let's I think it's a pretty good like to get uh, the idea. reveal from Sam Whitmer, please. Sam answers correctly. With Wedge, Wedge and Tilly's 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 Oh, John, incorrectly. Freddy. Wedge it Wedge up, up baby. Wedge it up. Oh, so there you go. So, uh, so Force Bros, two points, and you have uh, no, I've only seen that movie like three one. times. Next up in the Schmodown, the event of the year. It's the Schmodown Spectacular. It's finally here. I'm going for that belt again, because I liked it. I want all the belts. I want all the records. We show up, we bust bracket. We are gonna be in the Schmodown Spectacular because we deserve to be there. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia Schmodown. Dan Murrow and represent Wake Forest. 
I'm not coming for any belts. I'm keeping the spell. All year you've sent in your best memes and art, like this Nightmares poster by Johnny Ozart. Next, Chris Petrillo sent us this little treat, a compilation of Makuga and his Picks of the Week. You are gonna jam us up with a Pick of the Week. Pick of the Week, Pick of the Week, Pick of the Week. 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 God, I just, you hearing you say it, I get excited. Last but not least, Brian Ward treats us all to this Schmodown video that he made us this fall. Do you want your meme or artwork featured right here in 2017? Then email or tweet them to this address on your screen. And now here we are, your favorite part of the show, the best goofs and laughs from Collider Video. Now that you've listened so patiently to this whole little rhyme, sit back and enjoy because it's blooper time. I am so impressed. Well, John. You know this show's gonna be good, you guys. You know this show's gonna be good. Hello, hello. This is gonna be a nice, concise show. We're gonna keep on target the entire time. I swear, never veer off course. He's got a sausage run out of his I know. neck. Give him a break. Yeah, I don't listen to Nickelback. I listen to Dick Back. You shave your head and go to sleep. And you're like, There's no way it can be good. There's no way. Marvel made quite the impression with the recently released casting announcement for Taika Waititi's Thor. I did it again, didn't I? Taika Waititi. No! Taiko Waititi. Yeah. White, like, okay. Waititi. Okay. Waititi. Continuing battle for the Iron Throne will be 69 minutes. Yeah. Okay, I'm sure Sasha and Josh are, are giggling right now, so let's not cut to their cameras. What the got it. Which Sorry. Is it was I'm calling a 10 year old kid who found a Playboy magazine. Do I know exactly what I'm looking at? No, but it's exciting. It's new. It's fresh. I don't really understand everything that is going on on the page, but man, it's a whole new world. A lot of people are really mad at Ellis right now. Uh, one person, they're like, How dare you, Mark? Raphael is the emotional tension. And I'm sitting at the table with a couple of soon to be unemployed guys. Also, here's John Schnapp. Hey, just because John Campia said, I don't want you to make those funny voices, I was like, Campia, what what's wrong with you? Why he tried to put the lockdown on Petey Peppers and I, Tony Ravioli. We said, hey, Giovanni, you're on. Italian. We're the roots. Like, what's wrong? I'm going to send you a croissant right now. Come on. And watch this little trick. You make me so tired. I am intrigued just because I think it. <laughs> oh, my God. There it is. Oh, my God. There amazing. it is. The picture that broke the internet is Tyler Hecklin's Badonk. Like, we need to call him Super Donk. I like the photos that were leaked online with him and his Badonka Donk. I, 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 I do enjoy those. Not because of his butt, but uh, as a black man, I do admire it. I got high hopes. I've got high hopes. Jax, no! <laughs> oh, no! Gemma! Ow, 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 ow. This because he's Vader! That's why we need to see more! <laughs> That's why! Did you get him moving like that? <laughs> Holy crap! I just got PTSD from the war. Dick Bask. Baxter asks. <laughs> there it is. There it is. I have a song. A no. Scrotum. It is a tiny piece of skin. No, 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 Sasha, that's, uh, that's, uh, why don't you run songs before? That's for Collider TV after dark. Bad boys, bad boys, but what you gonna do? But what you gonna do when they come for you? What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Sing it with me. Believe it or not, I'm flying on air. I never thought I could feel so free. I'm flying away on a wing and a prayer. Who could it be? Why, John, please? Believe it or not, it's just me. Cut to a wide shot. Christian, buy or sell Arnold's new movie, movie Why We're Killing Gunther. 
<laughs> Had to pull it out. Don't really care about Mary Poppins at all. But, I mean, look, the talent involved in there. I don't. I, uh, I, look, I grew up watching Mary Poppins. I don't know what to think. The last of us is a good video game and they're not going to make the movie. No! <laughs> God, no! <laughs> no! Also here is the oldest man in the room. And probably, like, in Burbank. What are you talking about? In, in, uh, in the world. Hollywood is fucked. We're, we're fine. I'm part of it. I'm part of it. I would love to be a part of this movie, but if people <laughs> know how to great sell the guy. Oh and some more of that amazing one room theme music that I could listen to forever. Hello, everyone. Uh, looks like I have another sauce. Yeah, sauce is yeah. still here. Careful what you name your Twitter handle, kids. It might get read on Jedi Council one day. Sarcastic old dick, <laughs> right? Wow. Because we know the nitty ditty. The ni <laughs> nitty ditty. <laughs> I know, bang bang nitty bitty. <laughs> Alice pointed out though, I should be glad that that sausage party is not number one. Down to the nitty ditty. The nitty ditty, <laughs> Dennis and Kevin. Well, you know, Christian was like, I I need them to, I, I need ratings. Can I go to butt? Real nice. Oh, <laughs> converted her over. All right. Uh -huh. Now it's time. Surrounded by shit rats. I am intrigued just because I think it's. <laughs> oh my god. There it is. Oh my god. There amazing. it is. How fast is that now? Oh, can we, uh. Yeah. Thanks, Ashley. Oh. Fucking Comster! <laughs> Though not easy to find, they're located all over the Star Wars galaxy. Most notably in the Crystal Click. They're located all over the Star Wars galaxy. No. The idea came from early drafts of, uh, mm, draft. Sorry, guys. My tongue is sticky today. Tell Sinead to keep up the incredible work. <laughs> uh, Thanks, Chloe. Whoa. I'll tell her when I see her later today. The trailer was like a 17-year-old Mark Ellis finding a Playboy magazine and being like, I know exactly what I'm looking at and I want more. He always has this look on his face like he's holding in like a fart. He's just like... <laughs> And he's just like, whole, like every <laughs> shot of him, just like. Okay. <laughs> so, so, what's, what's going on? Don't tell Ashley. <laughs> Who the hell knows? I know. I know. Something. But I'm listen, PG-13, Suicide Squad. Tell me, I'm getting afraid. I'm freaking out right now. I'm freaking out right I'm now. I'm so confused. Woo! Woo! Phenomenal cosmic power, as revealed in the end credits. What? I was on a roll. Fuck you, penguins. Yeah, we're we're gonna fix that in post. Yeah, we'll just. We're all we're a, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if anybody can Our see this. This is a, just. Work. This okay. is so we'll funny. Be... Hello, my name is Natasha. Uh, okay. Well, the uh, the rats don't seem that energetic. They seem very <laughs> underfed. They seem very hungry. The sausage is still smiling. <laughs> don't think I would judge, especially if it's candy I like. like yeah. If you, if if you, you bring a bag research. of dark chocolate. Like, you got me, man. Yeah, and you pull out some donut holes. <laughs> <laughs> Every man. time we're, we say the word the chakra up here, I'm catching Ashley Mova grinning. I just can't hear this <laughs> word know. and this picture. Every time you're like, what do you think of the shocker image? Like, explain shocker to us, Shep. Let us know about the shocker. I'm just like, oh. Benjamin Button, it's his whole life. Look at me, blah, blah. That's what I think of when you say Benjamin. Blah. It will be better than hot guy and hot girl. Uh, <laughs> that just scared. That just scared the crap out of me. We I missed her so much last week. Miss Perry Nemiroff. I'm pretty sure I was here last week. Were you? Were you here? I was, I was here with Ryan. Oh, I clearly enjoyed the Fourth of July <laughs> yesterday. The fact of the matter is, I'm still going to be in the movie. They're not putting me front and center, but I'll be there. I wanted Benicio. I said, "Come on, do the movie." He said, "No, I can't. I do Sicario two, three, four, and seven. So for me, I don't like it, but I'm going to do it." Yeah, you can find me down there. Uh, well, 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 no. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Fuck, okay. <laughs> so what's going on, man? I'm gonna do this. It's <laughs> a little inside joke for all my friends. <laughs> there you go. I'm your 
host, Natasha Martinez, and this is Yeah, Jamie yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, that's Schnapp, that's Christian Harloff. <laughs> I'm John Campia. <laughs> Josh and I are supposed to have a mandate. We had it scheduled. It was in the calendar. And what does he do instead? He gets engaged. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, Perry's going into the giggle this zone. There you have it. We're finished. The end of the year. We hope that we filled you with Collider holiday cheer. And remember, if you don't have time to watch and read more, as always, that's what Collider Best of the Week is for. Happy holidays, everyone. Hey, guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.